Hey everybody, welcome to my first installment of Writing Gems. Um, for those of you who don't know or who are tuning in on YouTube, um, my name is Hannah Clark. I am the author of the Young Adult Fantasy Adventure series um, called Cabo Goth. And um, this is kind of going to be my way of passing on a lot of wisdom that I learned um, while writing my first novel and what I've picked up since then. Um, for those of you especially who are aspiring writers, I hope that this is really helpful for you because once I learned these things, it was like a, a switch turned on and I was able to move forward so much easier in my writing. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna keep these short, so I'd like to just jump right in. And today I'm gonna start with um, kind of the bare bones of a story structure. Um, I'm an outliner. I am what they call an architect. I um, do a super detailed outline with my stories before I start writing. I wasn't always that way. Um, I started out writing Kaboga, the first book in my series, um, as a gardener. And what a gardener is, is, is you just kind of start writing and then see where the story takes you. For me that was uh, really messy and um, ultimately I learned a ton but it took me a lot longer to learn what I could have learned a lot faster had I just focused on outlining and then started writing. So anyway, whatever you are, a gardener or an architect, what I'm going to show you is going to be helpful. Um, so I'm going to get started uh, and what uh, what I'm going to be focusing on today is something called the Ferralt's Triangle. Now the Ferralt's Triangle is something that they use in especially screenwriting classes. I took a screenwriting class in college and it was by far the most beneficial beneficial of all of my um, creative writing writing classes as far as helping me um, in writing Cabo Goth. It really helped me to understand what a story looks like visually, um, what it's supposed to do, um, and that there's kind of, I don't know if it's necessarily a science, but there's there are formulas um, behind writing. Um, when be Before I didn't really understand that, I thought a lot of times that authors just kind of magically came up with these great journeys and adventures that um, that I'd read growing up. But that's not necessarily true, actually. Um, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Uh, so this right here is what's called the Ferralt's Triangle. What it is, is we have right here, we have the beginning. The beginning leads up to what's called an inciting incident. The inciting incident is the beginning of the rising action that leads to the climax. Then you have your denouement, or resolution, and then the end of your story. So your beginning is anything that leads up to the inciting incident. And what the inciting incident is, um, it's the moment that your protagonist decides to be the hero of their story. So, for example, in Cabo Goth, uh, my protagonist's name is Nora Lukens, and the inciting incident in book one is when she returns home um, from boarding school to find that her uncle's been murdered and um, she decides to find out why he was murdered, who murdered him, and what it has to do with all the mystery that she found surrounding his, um, his death. So that inciting incident leads her into what is called the rising action. Now the rising action, um, I've heard it explained really well by um, the author Dave Farland, who is a huge fantasy author and uh, an amazing teacher. He called the rising action um, a series of try-fail cycles. Now, a try-fail cycle takes the goal that your protagonist is presented with here when, for example, when Nora decides to find out who's killed her uncle. Um, it takes that goal and your protagonist goes through these try-fail cycles, which is them trying to achieve the goal and then failing, and then trying to achieve the goal and then failing, and then trying to achieve the goal and then failing, and then finally trying to achieve the goal and then actually succeeding, which becomes the climax. But I want to st spend a little bit of time right here for a second. Um, Dave Farland, the same author, um, said that the amount of try-fail cycles in a story should be anywhere from three to five. He said that's that's pretty much the, the perfect ratio, otherwise your reader will get bored or um, it's just too much to put them through before they finally achieve, the protagonist finally achieves the, the, the goal. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway. So the climax um, 
is when they finally achieve the goal. So, for example, um, if you write romance, it's going to be when your protagonist finally wins the guy or the girl. Um, if you write fantasy adventure like me, it's going to be when your protagonist finally defeats the villain, um, whether the villain be external or, intel, or internal. If you write, say, more literary fiction, oftentimes those, um, those journeys are more internal and they're more uh, philosophical sort of journeys. And so your um, climax is going to, be, going to be when your protagonist receives it's their moment of enlightenment when they um, finally kind of figure it out, um, this philosophical journey. Um, so after your climax, you're going to come into what is called the denouement or the resolution. What happens in the, des uh, the denouement is all of these threads, uh, story threads and um, conflicts that are going on during your try-fail cycles that lead up to the climax will all be resolved in this denouement portion of your story. And then it's the end, the end of your story. So. Um, Understanding this basic structure of, of a story really helped me to kind of wrap my mind around what a story is supposed to do, um, what the journey is supposed to look like, what it, what it looks like that you're, you know, taking your reader on, and what elements are required to give them that kind of um, endorphin rush that, that really keeps them coming back to you, um, coming back to your, your work as an, as an author and builds that successful platform for you because... Um, you know, being able to give them that endorphin rush is really why people read, why they read for entertainment. And um, so anyway, I hope this is really helpful for you, um, those of you especially who are aspiring writers. Um, if you have any questions about the Feralt's Triangle or outlining or anything about writing that, that you're um, struggling with and would like me to answer in these um, writing gems, go ahead and, and leave a post on my blog. Um, and I would, I, I'll be, I'm more than happy to answer them because I really want these um, writing gems to be for you and to help you along in your journey a little bit faster than I was able to go. So anyway, um, I will see you guys next time. I'll be posting these probably every, um, every two weeks um, and, and we'll, we'll be posting them along with my process of writing book two in the series to kind of keep you guys kind of involved in, in this whole process. So anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.